So welcome, folks. I wanted to wanted to describe the mechanism of a particular public key cryptography algorithm called RSA. It's named after uh, three people, Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman, who invented this algorithm around uh, 1977. And in this video, I'll tell you how to employ the RSA algorithm, but I won't explain why it works. Although in the next video, I'll hint at that only, only a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna write here what, so Amazon wants to make a way so that they can broadcast a public key so that anybody can use that public key to send them an encrypted message, but nobody who doesn't have their private keys can decrypt those messages. So Amazon picks um, two large, say 100 digit primes, call them P and Q. So 100 digit, not like, a prime bigger than 100, 100 digits. So these are really, really large numbers. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of work on finding large primes in part for, for certain crypto systems. Okay, these are gonna be part of Amazon's private key. So Amazon will never tell anybody what these primes are. Okay. Next, Amazon generates um, two 200 digit integers E and D. Should have said D and E, but whatever. Such that we have the following relation, P minus one times Q minus one divides evenly into E times D minus one. Okay, so I haven't and I won't explain how Amazon finds these two 200, 200 digit numbers E and D, but it involves the Euclidean algorithm, which is you know closely related to um, uh, greatest common divisors and and, um, and generators of cyclic groups, right? Okay, so D is part of Amazon's private key. And then what is Amazon's public key? So, so sort of this is public. Anybody can sort of go to Amazon's webpage and get, get this, they can get E and the product of P times Q. Let me emphasize that all you can get is P and Q multiplied together. You can't get P and Q individually. Um, and if you could factor P, and, P times Q into the product of P times Q, then you could use that to break this crypto system. You could now start decrypting messages that were intended for Amazon. Okay. And, and maybe, maybe I should say that D is the real private key. So D, D is all that's needed to decrypt, I believe. We'll check that. All right. So I want to send Amazon my credit card number. X, and I'm gonna assume that X is less than PQ, okay? My credit card number is what, 16 digits long? P times Q is the product of two 100 digit numbers, right? So X is definitely less than P times Q. And why this is important is Amazon is gonna only recover X mod PQ. Okay, that's all Amazon's gonna recover is the remainder of X when it's divided by PQ. But 
But since x is way less than pq, that gives you x itself. So you can, you can transmit much larger messages than just a credit card number by this way. And if you had a, a message that was so long that it was lar larger than that many, say, digits or letters, you could split it up into chunks. OK, so private to me should be my credit card number. Don't want to share that. So what do I now do to send Amazon my credit card number? I compute R, which I do as follows. I take X, raise it to the eth power, and then reduce this mod PQ, OK? And this is the encrypted message. So R is the encrypted message. So I sort of send R. And sure, I mean, it's probably not good practice to give R to anybody, but you know my internet provider certainly has R. And I've done this in a way so that it's not easy for somebody who intercepts R to recover X, okay? A comment here. So let's look at this number, XE. Not, not XE mod PQ, but just XE before I've reduced it mod PQ. Okay. X to the ETH power. This has approximately, um, or at least as many as 10 to the 200th power digits. All right. So that's large. The number of atoms in the universe is, um, is between 10 to the 79th power and 10 to the 81st power, I've been told, or Wikipedia has told me, okay? So <clears throat> 10 to the 79 or 10 to the 81, it's an unbelievably, unbelievably large number, larger than the number of atoms in the universe. So 10 to the 200 digits, you can't store this number on a computer, okay? You can't store X to E power on a computer, way too many digits to store. But PQ is much smaller, right? P times Q is, is much smaller. And so one thing to note here is that you don't compute X to the E, you only compute X to the E mod PQ. So you keep multiplying x by itself many times, like x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth. And as you do this, you reduce mod pq every time so that you can actually compute, compute this, right? So an example of this would be, let's say I wanted to compute um, um, three to the fourth power mod 10, okay? So, three to the fourth power of mod 10. One way to do this would be three times, three is just three, and then three times three is nine, and then three times three times three is nine times three, which is 27. And then three times three times three times three is 27 times three, which is um, 81. And then reduce mod 10 to get one mod 10, okay? But notice I had to store 81 doing that and I don't wanna do this method if I'm gonna get a number that has 10 to the 200 digits. So another way to do this is three times three is nine. And then three times three times three is nine times three, which is 27, but mod 10, that's just seven. And then three times three times three times three, well, that's just seven times three. 
and seven times three is 21, which mod 10 is one. Okay, so you still get the right answer, reducing by this modulus as you go. And that's using a little bit of basic group theory to, to make this more computationally efficient. Okay. Let me tell you what happens next. To conclude, Amazon computes the following. So Amazon has their private key D and they compute R to the D power mod PQ using the same computational simplifications I just sort of highlighted a little bit. Um, and let me just say, this gives X mod PQ by, uh, for now, I'll just say math magic. And we'll explain this a little bit more in the next video. And, and furthermore, since X was less than PQ, X mod PQ, the remainder when divided by PQ is just X. So that's, that's how this particular algorithm works. Um, Amazon chooses a private key. It's really D, but it's created using two primes, large primes P and Q. They share a public key, which is both E and P, the product PQ. You take your credit card number X, you raise it to the ETH power, super large power, but you're doing it mod PQ, which makes it computationally more efficient. Amazon receives that message R and they decrypt it by raising it to the Deeth power mod PQ. And that's, that's your credit card. So I think the letters are chosen well. E is what you use to encrypt and D is what Amazon uses to decrypt. As I mentioned, if you could factor this product into the individual primes P and Q, then you can use that to attack this crypto system and, and decode messages. Um, or maybe, let me say that differently. I think what's more correct to say is that if you could break the RSA crypto system, then you could factor this number into P times Q. And to our knowledge, that's a really, really hard problem. And so that's why folks, for the most part, um, think of RSA as, well, used to think of RSA as secure. And now, now it's a little bit outdated, but for a long time, it was a very secure crypto system. Public questions or comments? All right, thanks.